we're coming to the end of uh, this ham fest and I've just caught up with Steve. I haven't seen Steve in a long time. Steve's course on is K0KYA and Steve used to, if you guys remember, used to do a propagation report for us and let, let us run his podcast within hours. But how are you doing, Steve? Hi, I'm OK. We've been quite busy at the show. Lots of interest in what's going on and we're promoting some of the RSGB propagation tools that are now available and talking about the current state of the sunspot cycle. So that's not very good news, actually, but uh, there we go. So there is a sunspot cycle? Apparently, yes. We are at sunspot minimum or very close to sunspot minimum. The experts say that it'll maybe kick off again next June. Um, 2020 and the next cycle is predicted to be very similar to the last one so not a particularly good cycle not a particularly bad cycle certainly not a more minimum that some people have been talking about but we'll just have to wait and see yeah well we did SSB field day uh, a couple of weeks ago and in fairness you know it, the bands were dead we were working very few uh, UK stations but we still did over 300, uh, something about like 320 contacts, mainly out into Eastern Europe. But So the bands aren't totally dead, are they? The bands are never totally dead. It's a case of finding the right band at the right time and with the right mode. Um, at the moment, because the conditions are so poor at times, you've got to really look at CW, you've got to look at FT8 um, to get the contacts. I mean, I contacted the Falkland Islands last week on 10 metres FT8. I mean, if somebody had told me that you could work the Falklands on 10 metres in September, I would have said, no way. But that's what you can do. Um, at the same time, you know, you've got to go where the, where, the, where the DX is. And probably sometimes you're not going to go much above 20 metres, but it's there, and you just have to work at it. Also, you've got to pick the right times. And this is where propagation studies comes into it. At the moment, today, we're having a geomagnetic storm. The conditions are really bad, um, not good at all. Yesterday was actually quite good because we got a bit of a pre-auroral enhancement before that storm. So you would have said yesterday that probably conditions were very good. Yeah. But with um, with FT8, one of the, my friends who lives on Cyprus said, at least I'm operating HF. I've got all this HF gear that I've spent a lot of money on and FT8 is allowing me to, to use my gear in, instead of packing it up. So that's a good thing. I think I've changed my opinion. I used to be very anti-FT8, thought it was killing amateur radio, but in times of low sunspot activity, you know, you either get on the radio and work FT8 or you work nothing, it's up to you. I think you've got to fish where the fish are, you know, and this is where, what's going on at the moment. And you can make contacts with FT8. Yeah, so that's good. So you've got some uh, new products that the RSGB, are, uh, you're going to tell us about, the uh, propagation uh, products. So what, what the first one? Well, the first one is really um, something called Proppy for RADCOM. What we've had for a long time, obviously, is propagation predictions in RADCOM, and they're based on 100 watt sideband to a dipole. Now, people were saying, well, yeah, but I've got a three element stepper and a kilowatt. I can do way better than this. And other people with QRP were saying, well, I can't work anything that's in there. So there's nothing we could really do about RADCOM. We looked at different ways, but decided in the end to go online. So we got um, the programmer who produced VOACAP for us, uh, Yari OH6BG, and he's come up with an online tool um, which is accessible from the RSGB website. So you go in, you say, well, I'm running this amount of power, this amount of gain is on my antenna, and I'm going to be running FT8, CW, whatever. And it will give you a month's worth of propagation predictions, which are tally, you know, basically um, tailored to your needs and your station. We've also done a, the same thing with a program called ITU RHF Prop, um, which is the, an alternative uh, model of the ionosphere, and they've done the same. So you've got two tools there that will give you propagation predictions just for your station. So, so that's interesting because, you know, as you say, if you have, a, if you are a QRP operator, you, you, it's not going to be the same as if you are running, all right, 400 watts in the UK. Um, so it, it's got to be interesting. You've got to, it's got to be horses for courses. Yeah. So that's quite good, I think. Yeah, I think we needed to come up with something for people, and we, this is what we've done. And I think it's working very, very well. So you tailor your predictions to your particular station. The other tool we've got is something called PropQuest, which is produced by um, Jim G3YLA. That shows you a real-time uh, plot of the critical frequency and from that you can work out, interpolate, or extrapolate actually, the maximum usable frequency over different path lengths. So you can see instantly you know, where, where you're going to likely get to 
Then we've got another one called Proppy, which will show you, we've got it running on a PC here, show you a, a plot of the world and where you're likely to work to on your particular band and your particular mode. So we've got a lot of new electronic or computer generated tools, so you don't have to download and install any software at all, just go on the web and get into them. Yeah, well that's, that's a good use of the web because as our hobby, I mean I've been in it 20 years, I'm a new person to the hobby, 20 years, I've seen a lot of developments, but embracing the internet, embracing computers to do some of the things that used to take days to do, now we can actually see it on a screen almost in real time, so that's good. Well, we've been lucky. We have some incredible programmers. Yari OH6BG um, has done a great job with the VOACAP based one. James Watson in the Saudi Arabia has done the Proppy one for us. And then at WeatherQuest, they produced the PropQuest program that uh, Jim Bacon uh, d designed, really. So it's not really down to me. I can come up with some of the ideas, obviously, but uh, it's down to some fantastic programs who did it all free of charge for us. Well, that's what it should be. In fairness, it is our hobby. We are our hobby. All right, I understand some people don't make a living out of our hobby, but in fairness, promoting our hobby and sharing is certainly what we all do. Well, you know Radio Hams, the best word they like is free. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, that's what I say about the podcast. It's one of the few things you're going to get free when they come through the door. So, Steve, listen, show us some of your, 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 your programs and uh, then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, well, this is... Um, the Proppy program that's running and we're just showing you uh, an animation of 20 meter propagation over a 24 hour period. Yeah. So that, that looks looking interesting. So this is the uh, the number of dBs at the side So and uh, this is the grey line going across. Yeah, as you can see there is no propagation overnight. There it goes, it will die out overnight and then as soon as the sun comes up propagation kicks in again and this yeah. is 20 meters. The Proppy tool that uh, is Gwyn G4 FKH has produced for us, and I think it's very useful. They're using this at the National Radio Centre at Bletchley Park because it's a great way of putting a big monitor on the wall and just showing propagation on, a, on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. That looks great. That looks great. What's the other one I see behind us? Well, this is just, this is just Whisper. Um, we're showing that even though conditions are bad, you can make contacts. We've got a little aerial um, and 10 watts we're running from the site actually here in the building. And yesterday we were getting over to the States, into Florida, into Georgia. Today conditions are not so good. There's been a, you know, a, dis a geomagnetic disturbance, but we're still getting up into uh, Finland and around Europe. Yeah. Well, for those of you not going to see the video or listening on this audio, what Steve's talking about, a little antenna on 20 meters, I'm looking at it. It's a telescopic wick. I would have said it was more a two meter set up for two meters because it's not uh, fully extended. And if you can do that, then inside a building that's predominantly metal, you're doing pretty well. Well, we said always it's about choosing the right band and the right mode, and we're using Whisper, which is incredibly um, good for uh, you know low power um, communications. And you know, FT8 would probably do something very very similar to this. You will make contacts. Not necessarily on sideband, but you will make contacts if you've got the right mode. That's good. So, Steve, a long time since we spoke to you. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they uh, find you, websites, that sort of thing? Well, the blog site is g0kya.blogspot.co.uk. A lot of propagation stuff on there, and you can contact me via that website. That's good news. Listen, Steve, it's been a long time. Let's not make it as long next time. Thank you very much for your time. Nice to see you again, anyway. Right.